You're listening to Two Chunks and a Hunk. Movie musings for mostly everyone. Chunks and a hung. This is Doubtfire herself. My name, uh, it's Mr. Confidence Water, actually. Thank you very much. <laughs> My name is Jordan Wonders, and this week <laughs> I'm your hunk. Confidence Water. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Doge, and you know that little voice people have that tells them to quit when they're ahead? You don't chunk one. Chunk one? Wait, chunk you one, said hunk already, one. huh, Jordan? I said hunk, yeah. I got so caught up in that. I'm Carter, and paradise is close at hand. <laughs> A Shangri-La, the chunky land. <laughs> we shout out to our former lo- roommate and forever friend, Liam. Uh, Liam used to... Just sort of randomly, as though compelled by an unseen force, to break into on the trail we blaze. <laughs> yeah, I've heard him do that too. <laughs> I can't. I cannot hear that song without thinking of my beautiful, beautiful bestie Liam. I kept just repeating Elton stanzas. Yeah. And Chelsea would just look over and be like, "Are you going to do that the whole movie?" And I realized I yeah. didn't even know I was doing it. It just <laughs> comes from the soul. It comes from the soul. We'll talk about Elton John songs for sure. Because the movie got the movie got some (laughs) of them. But before we do that, Jordan, why are you the hunk? What gives you uh, the right? Well, it's very simple. There is one enduring love in my life, media wise. It is. uh, It started earlier than almost any of them, and has lasted longer. Than almost any of them. It's had some ebbs and flows, some some ups and some downs, but it stayed pretty consistent. And that is, uh, I I love Zelda so much, and mm. I have officially pre-ordered. Are you talking about uh, Robin Williams' daughter or F. Mm-hmm. Scott Fitzgerald's wife? Yes, and I have officially pre-ordered the Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom for the Nintendo Switch. I mean, uh, pre-ordered digitally uh, so that I can play the moment. That it goes live. I'll be doing that later today. I'm unbelievably excited. <laughs> when do, when is the moment it goes live? It'll be 11 p.m. on the night before the written release date. So uh, because we're Central Time, so it'll come. What out, is the release date? Uh, May 12th. Okay, that's close. So it'll come out at 11 p.m. on May 11th. That's very close. But it's it's. I'm having a real um, elementary school Christmas moment here, <laughs> where it's like. Conceptually, I understand that it's very close, but it does, in fact, feel like it will be an eternity before it gets here. Normally, month go fast, but mm-hmm. when excited, month yeah, goes slow. Yeah, month go real month slow. Month go slow. Yeah. Month, month go, go slow. real slow. And so yeah. that's sort of what's happening. I'm basically having like a how many sleeps till Zelda moment every day. <laughs> I've got, a, I've got a, ch- a, a chain of paper rings. <laughs> On my door, and I'm tearing one off every Advent day. calendar for uh, Zelda. Yeah. Until Zelda. Yeah, I have, a, I have a calendar filled with uh, little Korok chocolates. I'm just excited wow. for the soundtrack. I, I did hear that Elton, uh, strangely enough, is, yeah. is collaborating with this yep. one. So. <clears throat> yeah. No, it, the, it, the, the newest trailer opens up with Link skydiving as soon as he hits the ground. It's like, on the trail we blaze. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is very exciting. Uh. <laughs> No, I can't wait. I'm stoked. I, it's yeah. not, you know. Congrats. D- D- Doge wanted to be the hunk because he broke his rib coughing like an old man. <laughs> I didn't want to be the hunk for that. With The way we do this behind the curtain is that we say, who's done something this week? <laughs> the only thing I've done this week is cough so hard that I bruised a rib. How? How? What's rattling he's around 90 from the he's cough 90. to punch you from the inside I choke, I choke. I choke. I choke on my spit and I cough so big. <laughs> I bruise a rib. 
<laughs> oh man, that is some it's old tough, man stuff, man. dude. That's hard. <laughs> just walking around with your tongue half out of your mouth, just like, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you just right down the old windpipe. <laughs> See, I was trying to, I was trying to eat just a handful of pralines for breakfast, like I do every day, and then I just choked on my spit and my raisinets. <laughs> oh man, There's, dude, how me. how old man of a thing is it? The concept of a box of raisinets and you just eat a handful of those for breakfast—that sounds like something a peepaw would do. Yeah, a classic peepaw move. I started That's doing this in the war, move. and I never stopped. Oh gosh, <laughs> he always refers to him as his rations. Yeah. <laughs> Freeze dried raisinets. <laughs> uh, there are RREs. Rations. Raisinets ready to eat. <laughs> do you think we could sell, like, what kind of FDA clearance do we have to get to sell two chunks branded RREs? I have no idea. Probably none. Probably none. Let's do it. Yeah. No one's going to try and skewer us. No one's going to be like, you illegally. Like, who cares? Is that even a comp- competitive market? <laughs> we it's are just poised. us and raisinets, I think. We are poised yeah. for a huge takeover of the ready to eat ration market. <laughs> this is a huge opportunity for our brand. <laughs> this might be a hot take. It might not be a hot take. Raisins, whatever, dude. No, I don't like them. Yeah. I, to the surprise of no one, love, love raisins. Them. Of course you love do. them. Of course do you really? You I didn't. Yeah, I, I didn't know that, but I didn't have to know that. I knew that, you know. Of course you love raisins. Yeah. <laughs> the little the little red box of raisins. Uh-huh. Doge, I'm just going to tell gosh, you can't. love them. As love somebody them who so I much. think knows a lot about you. Yeah. Completely unsurprised. No. Yeah. No, I have the <gasps> snack preferences of a veteran of the Great War. So I yeah. totally get it. I totally yeah, Do- get it. Doge That's just amazing. walks around sucking on saltwater taffy and fistfuls yes. of raisins. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty great <laughs> snack actually. And, and his the things bit, that his, I only ever knew to call strawberries, like what, whatever the little <laughs> strawberry yep. candies were. Those little hard candies. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are actually Love them. Though. Love them. They're actually real good. A pretty funny bit would be to start referring to every single thing you eat as nature's candy. Mm. No matter All what it. it is. Let me get a sip of this nature's candy before we exactly. do our podcast. Exactly. That's a pretty nature's decent candy. bit. Hey, hand me a slice of that pizza. I need nature's candy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Went over to KFC, got a big old bucket of nature's candy. I, I've been referring recently to everything I drink as nature's water. <laughs> Just a cup of coffee. It's nature's water. <laughs> so stupid. Welcome to a, a podcast about movies, believe it or not. This one's going to be about movies today. Yeah, let's change it up. We're going to talk about one. Um, this is part of our four, number four gotten series where we are discussing animated movies not made, 2D animated movies not made by the mouse himself. Uh, these are movies that you, our beloved listeners, voted on. And mm-hmm. uh, last last installment of the series, we talked about Anastasia, and uh, that was the fourth place winner. This week, we're talking about the third place winner, working our way up the food chain. And the movie that you voted on and that we will be discussing today is known as The The Road Road to to El Dorado. Dorado. Let me just say, before we get too far in. Sure. I got no idea how this one made it, guys. This was a total shock to me. What? Shock boy. (laughs) This was just not... This was just not a big part of me. Yet. This was, I'm just saying, this is the hook. This is the doctors hate him. It's one simple Jordan's trick. Jordan's malfunctioning a little bit here. Yeah. So, order, he, order, out of order, out of order, order, out of order. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to think of what is it that uh, Bilbo does in Alien? That makes, us, makes it sound really strange. The guy who, uh, Ian Holm, his character, <laughs> when he's starting to- I was to, like, excuse me? That's pretty oh, much it. Shoot, Shoots all the yeah. milk and spaghetti out the bottom he of foams. his neck. When he foams. I could probably put that together right now if we wanted some good content. Do you got milk and spaghetti? Milk and spaghetti dude? pouring out. Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, I'm totally. Girl. Everybody does. Nick Reganas. Yes. Spain, 1519. With ruthless Spanish conquistador, Hernan Cortes, bound for the new world, swindling duo Miguel and Tulio find themselves with a worn-out treasure map and their backs to the wall. 
And as the two roguish conmen embark on the adventure of a lifetime, lured by the incalculable treasures of the fabled City of Gold, a story about friendship, loyalty, and the wondrous riches of a lost civilization unfolds. But the bewitching allure of shiny gold and a pressing dilemma stand in the way of a fresh, worry-free start. Is the road to El Dorado paved with greed? Wow. His his collection, his treasure trove of describing words. Endless. That's the real Endless. that's the real El Dorado. Yeah. The real treasure was the Nick Raganis that we made along the way. All the, Starting all to the feel time, that way about our podcast, time. actually. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I'm fine with that. I'm Big fine time. with that. This is this is fifty percent movie podcast, fifty percent Nick Raganis appreciation podcast. <laughs> Let's come out swinging, why don't we? I'm going to super dump. Go, go. Go, go, uh, my gadget, super dump. Super dump. My super dump, t- there are two things tied for my super dump, um, which I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to super dump both of them. Um, they're sort of unrelated, but they're both equally rough. My, my super dump part one is the uh, Elton John portion of the soundtrack. It's bad. Could you even Woof. believe you're saying that? I know. Like- not not some few years before. I know. He was Blimey. the guy. I know. The, I know it. The thing, I looked it up because I was like, there's no way he wrote these. Every single one of these sounds like a Stephen Curtis Chapman B-side that didn't make the record. <laughs> it does, dude. He did. Him and Tim Rice, lyricist, like the exact same team that did The Lion King, did this. And yeah, it's really wow. bad. It's really bad. And this movie is infinitely better with an instrumental soundtrack and no musical numbers at all. Um, the, the, I don't know the term, Doge, you might know the term. It, what is, is there a different term for music that our characters are singing? Cause it's not diegetic cause they're not hearing it, but like, right. is it, is there a term for music that are, there's three types of music in this movie. One of them sure. is pretty good. The other two are bad. The instrumental, like the score is pretty yeah. good. It doesn't bother it's, me at all. It is Hans Zimmer and John Powell collaborating yeah. on this. Yeah, doesn't bother me at all. Totally fine, yeah. totally passable. It's not one of the best soundtracks out there, but it'll work. It works. Then the other two types are both bad, and those two types are music our characters are singing and music being sung like a la Tarzan. Yeah. Both of those are bad, really Quite bad. bad. Quite bad. What is? Are there terms for those? Do you know? I'm sure there are. I don't know them. Elton yeah. is actually credited in the movie as narrator. Yeah, so they're like funny as if he's like ushering us into, and it didn't really feel like it had too many narrative elements, to be no. honest. No way. Messy. Just the trail we blaze. Uh, which, by the way, that song uh, is bad except for that one line, which owns. So, um, yeah. you know, take it or leave Is it. that but line yeah. good or do we just love our friend Liam? I think that's it. I really think I that's think it. We just love our friend trail Liam. Trail we blaze. I really so, think Elton, that's it. We, we did come up with a term for this, right? He's a traitor. Is that what we call the. Someone yeah. who was in a uh, Forgotten series and in a Disney movie. Oh, nice. Yep. Not yeah. a so we got, a then for this one, we got Frank Welker as well as Jim Cummings. Yeah. Traders yeah, as well. Deal. Amazing. Traders as well, the both but of But yeah, them. so that that's part one of my super dump is just the, everything but the score musically sucks. And then um, my other super dump is that the, the ending is so lame, dude. Sucks, dude. The ending is so lame. Uh-huh. It's just like, oop, we got away. Unbelievable. It, yeah. And it's, it happens so fast, the end. Yep. Yep. What a mess. So this was originally intended to spin off into a bunch of a bunch of movies about the horse and the two guys and Chell going on like a bunch of adventures for other lost gold. Because our map treasures. has multiple points yeah. yeah. too. And so then this movie you, didn't even turn a profit at the box office. They're like, oh, it, well, let's quietly pull the plug on that and focus more on that ogre movie. First we're about DreamWorks to put out. lost, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe animated loss for sure, but maybe ever loss. If you give me a better soundtrack, I'm actually, we'll talk about it. I have complicated feelings about this movie. I'm okay with more adventures of this crew, but it seems weird that Chell would be along for the ride being someone distinctly from El Dorado rather than two people and a horse fully outside of El Dorado who are just visitors going to visit someplace else. It's interesting that Chell would be part of it, but... You give me a better soundtrack, and I'm actually okay with the continued adventures of Miguel yeah. and Tulio. I was talking with Chels about this when we were watching. And I was like, man, it really, it feels obvious, but it means a lot, especially for these 2D animated, this era, to have good music. I think yeah. 
what really for helped. Sure. There was a lot going for the Emperor's New Groove, which came out this same year. Wow. Um, and they chose to kind of push all the Sting stuff to the credits, right? And so it was like Sting is still kind of a part of this. Uh, when he's actually singing, most of that will be in the credits. But it's so funny because it's like when you think of like my personal Mount Rushmore for these kinds of movies – in terms of the music, it's weird. It's Phil Collins and Elton John and Michael Bolton. And yeah. it's just, it's all over the place. But it's got, it has to be. That's what made Anastasia even get into the rent category for us, it feels yeah. like. It's because the, the music was so good. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason that I think, I mean, so spoilers, I guess, for a little behind the scenes drama for us. Anastasia beat the land before time by a single vote. And I do think it has to be on the strength of the music. Yeah, for sure. It's got to be why. And so the fact that the music is so, like, really just shockingly bad. Yeah, well, there's yeah, so really much bad. about it that's bad. Can I can I read just the first uh, couple of verses of the trail we blaze? Yeah, please. <laughs> it's please. a little bit too, I don't want to say cerebral, but the, the words are not meant to be easily remembered. There's something mm -hmm. about, can you feel the love tonight? Yes, Elton gets up his own butt a little bit and talks about vagabonds, but... In a kids' movie, but, uh, but look that's out, new not world. the version they sing in the movie, though. They changed the lyric for the movie to that's make true. it actually good. Look out, new world, here we come, brave, intrepid, and then some pioneers of maximum audacity whose resume, whose resumes show that we are just the team to live where others merely dream, building up ahead of steam on the trail we blaze. Changing legend into fact, we shall write into history, turning myth into truth. We shall surely gaze on the sweet unfolding of an antique mystery and will be revealed on the trail we blaze. It's kind of... On the trail we blaze. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's good for his own personal single. Yeah, but when he's sure. being attached to a cartoon. <clears throat> yeah, not quite doing it. Agreed. Yeah, not I mean, not it. not quite doing it is is to me a pretty good descriptor of the whole premise, the whole vibe of this movie is just. The the opening line, look out, new world, here we come, immediately sets up a little bit of like, ooh, that's kind of yikes. And then there's a, a undercurrent through this movie of just the depiction of indigenous people, the whole vibe of like, oh, good, the white Spaniards are there to teach them how to not do human sacrifice. It's just, it's a little yikes in a late 90s kind of way. Uh, sure. And there's, you know, we could fill a whole podcast with that, but- as three white boys, that's probably one of the areas in which we're least qualified to speak into the quality of this movie. I think there are many other areas that this movie is actually pretty bad. Uh, yeah. May I May I super dump? Yeah, if oh. you'd like. Kevin Klein and Kenneth Branagh are the least charismatic leads for this possible. I think that it was tough. They I'm going to full disagree here. They recorded their, their lines. voice acting has flipped for me these last few weeks. They recorded like their lines in the same room together the way that uh, the cast of Aladdin did, and I did not feel animated quality chemistry from them. I think that they're doing they're doing the the Bing Crosby Bob Hope thing, the road to you know that's what these Whatever. this movie is mm -hmm. kind of like a a reference to those movies from the forties. So they're doing sure. that kind of thing, and I, I get it. Like live action, they would be perfect for this, but they're I don't know particularly. Their performances are a little too subdued and subtle, I think, for me in this. Uh, we have another DreamWorks movie coming up next week that came out the year before that features Steve Martin and Martin Short as like a duo. Well, that's two weeks from now. It's two next weeks from week now? Is, it's two weeks from now. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's two weeks from now. Yeah. I kept thinking, especially because of how much Kevin Klein sounds a little Steve Martin-y in this role. He does. Man, if, if it was two performers who... Had a had an eleven out of ten, a fourteen out of ten type of charisma, rather than like a this is fun and subtle in live action kind of charisma. I think that would have helped us a ton, but it was just they were tough for me. I Man, my super pump is those two being in the same room and their interactions. <laughs> I you know what the strongest part of this movie is before we even go on an adventure. The strongest mm. part is the very beginning when they're rolling dice with Jigsaw and. <laughs> uh, doing the classic run from the bad guys. Um, doing their bit of of having a fight that's not actually a fight and getting away. I absolutely loved it and continued to enjoy them as voice actors to all the way up to super pumped them mm. for me. So I, I really liked it a lot. Yeah, I mean, we, we there's obviously more to talk about, so I hate doing this so <laughs> early, but my super pump is Miguel and Tulio. 
they're the funnest part of this movie. I actually think that their sort of like subdued performance here lends a real like dry, fast back and forth. It was very Ryan Reynolds-y, um, the performance specifically from Kevin Klein. But Kenneth Branagh is really fun too. And I think their sort of energy in their conversations, uh, I didn't know that they recorded in the same room, but it makes complete sense to me because I think that their chemistry and sort of like speed of conversation is so great and so funny. And I think they're like animated in such a way that really fits their performances to where yeah. they're so like, it's not, it's not, it's like hammy without being, without like chomping scenery, if you know what I mean. It's like sure. very, very British. over the top and silly physicality. Yeah, very mm-hmm. British. Um, and it's, I don't know. It really works for me. I think that they're the whole reason to hit play in the first place. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic. There's just not a ton of movies like this, if we're talking about this 2D, whether it's The House of Mouse or DreamWorks or, you know, any other installment to where we the duo starts together from the very beginning. Yeah. And kind of attempts to carry throughout. Yes, we've got our, uh, what would later be, much better iteration of, of of a horse in Maximus that we got entangled, but we've got like <laughs> our horse sidekick and an armadillo that doesn't talk. You know, they're following some of these same formulas yeah. that a lot of Disney movies do with a lot of fun side characters. It's funny that you but bring up Tangled two start is, is because good. I feel like I feel like Zachary mm-hmm. Levi's performance in that movie is pretty subtle and understated, but it works for me in a way that it that these don't work for me here. And he's playing the similar kind of just like you know con man type of character. Yeah, I don't know. That. I don't yeah, know why I they don't work for me. Tangled, Zachary Levi's performance in Tangled is more of a cartoon than yeah. the performances here, but I think that's why it works because this this movie is distinctly DreamWorks, whereas Tangled is distinctly Disney. And I don't just mean production companies. I mean vibe and everything. This movie there. has that sort of adult-leaning sure. dialogue and script. Yeah. That so many DreamWorks movies have. Yeah. Yeah. And while to me, this is probably like a 90% unrealistic movie. Sure. It is that 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 going for realism that hurts it as a cartoon. Because I think of Emperor's New Groove coming out the same year. And it's like, all of a sudden our legs can stretch in case we don't want to fall onto a pit of crocodile. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's Looney Tunes. It's like, people don't really die. People get squished. People get hit over the head. Their eyes change colors. You know, it's like, DreamWorks isn't doing that. They are going for just telling a far more realistic story as a cartoon, and I just don't ever think those two match up very well. I don't know. Sure. I hear that. I need to be silly. I need animals to talk, man. Why are are there animals (laughs) saying words? It did feel weird. It did feel weird when, uh, uh, oh, crap, what's his name? The, the, like, priest, the speaker for the gods in El Dorado. Mm. When he, like, busts out actual magic, and inhabits the jaguar statue and all of that stuff. That yeah. felt sort of like a mismatch for this movie. I, I don't know. And did. the magic, like fantastical creatures in El Dorado. I don't know. I get what they're going for. I get that they're going for kind of like a Jules Verne, like turn of the century, like adventure, sci-fi type of story. I just, uh, man, I don't know. I don't know if it's the script. I don't know if it's the direction. It's just something, the pieces didn't ever really gel together for me as I was watching this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that makes sense. This is a sloppy movie. I mean, it's not yeah. It's not up to the quality of a lot of like Disney animation. It's not it's not like airtight. It's it's very oh, man, I I don't know how to describe this. It's not amateurish cuz it, it's No. It's quote unquote like well put together, but it doesn't feel like it was maybe fully conceptualized until it was done. Yeah. Um but, was this a big movie for you guys, like as as small boys? Because I watched this was probably the second time I watched this, um, which may be why I'm not as into it. It wasn't as big as like the big hitters, but I, I've seen this quite a few times. It was about the second time I watched it. I was twelve, eleven or twelve, the first time this came out, mm-hmm. and it, even then, it was kind of like, oh yeah, huh, cool, it's okay. Interesting. You know, I just didn't want to. I wouldn't get back into it. I was seeing, you know, Prince of Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. 20 Fair times enough. before that and watching it 20 times after. Well, the other thing that we uh we we usually take care of about this time in the episode besides just reminding us how old Carter is 
is uh, shout announcements, which we're going to do right now. On the trail we blaze. Shout announcements, the part of the show where we give shout outs and make announcements. Shout out hey, to Carter, me. Jordan's boiling again. Will you help me tip him over and pour him out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> here's my handle and here's my spout. It's weird if you say it like that. Yeah, I actually yeah. don't want to ever say that again. It's not good if you say it with emphasis. <laughs> mm, you have yeah. to sing it or else you're going to go to jail. You can't just say it. Uh, hey, guys, here's yeah. my handle. See, isn't it horrible when you say it? Here's my spout's handle. worse, I think. Here's my spout. Bear tip me over. It sucks. What doesn't suck uh, is us and our foolproof decision making that has led us to where we are currently in spring delirium. Uh, so for all you whiny babies out there who were upset that maybe your favorite oh, yeah. cartoon didn't make the cut, you know, you have the chance to exercise some real power. Uh, and sit in the driver's seat, which is where we've been. We've been keeping it warm for you. But you can actually vote for the next round of Spring Delirium. We're in the Elite Eight now. You can vote for who makes it to the final four. Head to twochunksandahunk.com backslash vote or click the link in our Instagram or TikTok bio uh, to access that poll. And listen, I don't want to hear any belly aching about it. We've had enough people complaining about how we've gotten to this point so far. Why don't you do it? You do better. Yeah. You think you can? Good job, good job, Carter. Everybody give it up for to, Carter. I, I was supposed to be talking about. Good job, Carter. Carter. Give it up. Discord. Great line. Patreon. Right? We've got... <laughs> sorry. Um, we got a couple of levels of Patreon. A three-level tier gives you an extra vote and gives you a glimpse into some extra episodes. Should be on the way. Dungeons & Dragons has been replaced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because of uh, controversy. Of has not, it has not been replaced. Been it has been doing the replacing. Yes. It has been doing the replacement. Shout out also to Discord user Shelly Noor, who just posted the newest Tears of the Kingdom trailer in Discord, not knowing that that was uh, the whole reason I'm the hunk today. So we're on that same wavelength, Shelly. Appreciate Ooh, that's you. That's nice. Love you. Shelly also defended my honor when I, got, I butchered Jonathan Major's name. Did you pay him or not? You, you know what's, you know what's you funny? To, you need is, to pay him. You promised you would. You no, need to pay him. I've actually no, never had to have a listener defend my honor, but that's cool that he did that for you. Not a single listener has ever even considered defending my honor. <laughs> Y'all are acting like this is a good thing. You're, it's, you're just saying no one loves mm. you enough to care. Mm. Or I'm not ever wrong enough that somebody needs to step in. <laughs> no, I meant yeah. it the way that Carter said it. <laughs> I, meant, I, meant, I meant that by, by my math, all of our listeners would be like, let him drown. He probably jumped in on purpose. <laughs> if Alvin, Simon, and Theodore were on a train track and they were stuck... <laughs> most people are going to grab Theo first, I think. Well, if Alvin is stuck on a train track, most people would probably be like, "What did you do?" And I think <laughs> you that's our, it, I right? think that's our I think that's our listeners' general vibe with me is like, <laughs> eh, bought and paid for. Yeah. <laughs> bought and paid for, dummy. You reap what you sow, sucker. <laughs> um, so is it more ethical then if level. the train is coming to divert it so that it hits only three chipmunks or kills your whole entire family? No. I think it's I think a, a I think it's one. chipmunks on one side, Dave on the other, and it's mm. like, do you orphan the chipmunks? <laughs> anyway, uh, next week there's also a five level tier of Patreon. If you want to be a part of these conversations and defend our honor, all it costs is five dollars a month. It costs you zero to defend to mine because I'm I'm I don't need it. Consider it defended. no honor to defend. <laughs> You're, saying, it work. You're saying you have no honor, right? I don't get it. <laughs> It's just too easy to distract from defending Doge's honor because the moment anybody brings up trash food, everybody piles on anyway. That gets brought up in Discord more than I thought it would. Yeah. Hmm. Not by us. Hmm. No, I haven't brought it up in a millennia. I mean, well, you've brought it up now. You've summoned that specter, so now I know what my phone's going to be buzzing about for the next (laughs) week. (laughs) I mean, bought and paid for, pal. Next week... Uh, continuing our Forgotten series, we're going to be talking about uh, one of my one of my handful of cry buttons. Get ready, I'm going to be insufferable a week from today. Uh, we're talking about the Iron Giant. I can't wait. I'm very excited. Did you know? Did you know? I've never seen it. I did. Shall this shall be my first time? My introduction to the Giant of Iron. I don't remember it. I know I've seen it, and I probably saw it in theaters. But it's one of those big sads. 
But I just chose to not. I'm super passionate about this movie. I think it's beautiful. Like just an incredible story. And I can't wait. You better hope I like it. You will. (laughs) You will. I have no concerns whatsoever. (laughs) So tune in next week as we talk about Vin Diesel's The Iron Giant. At Kroger, we want our fresh produce to meet your expectations, which is why we're dedicated to doing up to a 27-point inspection on our fruits and veggies, checking for things like scarring. In fact, only the best produce like zesty oranges and crisp carrots reach our shelves. Because when it comes to fresh, our higher standards mean fresher produce. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Choose from a great selection of digital coupons and use them up to five times in one transaction. Check our app for details. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Let's talk about things that suck. Let's talk about things that are good. Let's start with things that suck. <laughs> Haven't we already done that? <laughs> yeah, We've been the starting villain, with that. The villain Impressive. in this movie is so lame, dude. So lame. Zekel yeah, Khan. Dump. Zekel yeah. Khan's the villain, yeah? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Super dump. And it's like, it is intriguing to have multiple, like more than one villain like out to get you and now you're having to navigate dodging all of them. But Cortez didn't even really end up being. No. A villain. He no. was just ignorant and frustrated and, and wanted to just move on. You lied to me, guy who came out of nowhere and I've never seen anybody like you before and you said you're from another world. Oh, you liar. Right. Leave him in the waterfall. Right. It or is. Like, let's take it him is do what? I don't conceptually know. so tough for me at the end of this movie to see Zekel Khan get his like comeuppance and be like, yeah, get him, conquistador. I know. Oof. I know. Oof. That's it, tough. And I think this movie wanted us to be like, at the end of the day, Miguel and Tulio learned that the people of El Dorado actually have a pretty cool life and that they respect them now and that they're awesome. And they saved him nah. from Cortez. But also, it's like, you made a whole white savior movie. And yeah. so, yikes. I don't think so. Big, big yikes. I did I appreciate, so. I did appreciate the little, the wink and nod from the chief, big chief, uh, who, who uh, basically like revealed to Miguel like, yeah, I know you're just- Of course you're not guys. But I'm going to keep it. Yeah. I love that. I I liked that. I liked that. I think that that, I don't know. To me, I think that should have been the like, I think there's a version of this movie where that is more of a narrative thrust. Where like Miguel and Tulio feel like they've never belonged anywhere before and that's why they're itinerant all the time. A hundred percent. And they're like, you don't have to pretend to be a god. We we actually like like you. you. And like, we're going to be generous to you because they've never been generous in their life, right? They're thieves. And so like, I don't know, man, there's so much meat on the bone and we 100%. just throw it in the trash and said, let's focus on the green beans. It's like, why, why are we focusing on the side? There's great meat that could be told there and it, it could be humanizing to the indigenous people rather than painting them as people who, except for the two leaders, have been completely fooled by these white guys pretending to be gods. I don't know, man. It's just, yeah. it's yeah. tough. Well, let me, let me, Let me soften some of those blows a little bit because as I was watching, the thing that I did appreciate about, which I understand how hairy this ground is to walk on, but um, we sports? No, (laughs) yeah, I loved it. That was my super pump. No, yikes. No, I think that yikes. I think (laughs) I think that thankfully the the saving grace in the sort of gross white savory type story here is that the person who caused this tribe of people in El Dorado to do the things that Miguel and Tulio made them stop doing was a bad person. And it's not like this tribe loved ritualistic sacrifice so much and they were just a bunch of monsters and Miguel and Tulio taught them how to be nice. It was more like they were under the control of a crazy cult leader and Miguel and Tulio opportunized, that's not a word, they used the opportunity that they would been given by thinking they were gods to be like, hey, maybe don't hurt these people for no reason. Yeah, it's man, I just feel like that is it. so hairy and yucky because no, that's agree. the whole the whole deal of like let me <laughs> let me a conquistador bring enlightened religion to you and totally wipe out your civilization. Man, it's tough. It's I tough. Know. Can I super pump? Just yeah. be positive. I like the horse. Be funny. <sighs> that's your super pump for this movie. Man, I did not like this movie. I rated it on IMDb after I watched a two out of ten. A I, two? I thought, dude, I was so bored by this movie. You our power. It. You were offended. Yeah, our power started flickering during this movie, and I was like, "Oh, go off, please, please, please make it where I can't finish this movie." Uh, wow. 
it, it our power did end up going out, uh, or our internet did, with 20 seconds left in the movie. And so, of course, you know, once our internet came back, I did watch those last 20 seconds. But, <laughs> man, it just, there was very little about this that I found actually enjoyable. Uh, mm. And I like when... I like when they're on the boat right before the shark comes up and eats the rudder. Uh, when they're like, did the rations make it? And the horse looks over his shoulder because he's eating all their food. Well, that was pretty funny. Laughed out loud, actually, at that. Funny horse. Funny yeah. horse. Funny horse always going to get me, actually. More movies, more movies should have a funny horse in them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing that you like about this. <laughs> I'm honestly trying to think of something that I like that because every the time single, of day that Jordan just gave <laughs> every single thing that I'm like, oh, I like that is a little tainted by the like by the yuckiness of it, right? Yeah. And sure. horse is horse is untainted. Always funny. And it is literally like exactly Maximus from Tangled. And I do think Maximus does it better. Uh but horse Maximus is infinitely better. Horse is funny. I like horse. I don't have to feel any yuckiness about being like, go watch the road to El Dorado for the horse. The horse doesn't do anything that's yucky to me. Oh, yeah. It almost feels like a, a write-in on the ballad <laughs> when you're voting. <laughs> it absolutely does. You're like, I don't like any of this. I mean, it's fair. So, it's fair. Got to give my vote to I don't know, horse. guys. It just didn't work for me. It didn't work for me. Have you guys super pumped? Oh, it was the thing I hated most. Yep. It was Miguel yeah, and we Tulio. did super pump. <laughs> yeah, it was the objective best part of the movie. <laughs> uh, th- this might be the first time. I don't know if time. I was in a bad mood or whatever. It just did not work for me, guys. I'll, ugh. That's fine. Yeah, I think this is the first time in the history of our podcast that I have no idea where to take this now because there's clearly nothing you like about this. And I don't want to spend 10 minutes poo-pooing on this movie for the rest What's of our crazy time. Is I, don't, I don't think we're missing anything. Like, I don't No, think there's not much there's there's not anything much else a, to talk okay, about. Okay, there's here's not much an extra. Here. Here's a couple just bonus thoughts. I'll give you some bonus thoughts. Typically, you'd have to follow me on my own personal Patreon for this, but I'll give bonus thoughts here for free. Bonus feet thought number picks? one. But bonus thought number one. Everybody check your phones. Doge, doge. Picture of my feet. Bonus thought number two. Doge, Cortez doge. Cortez does look like a, a roided up juicy Lord Farquaad, which is kind of funny to me. Oh, yeah, his haircut God, is awful, dude. Kind of funny to me. Kinda Let's talk to me. more about how bad Elton John's music was for this movie because I that's the thing I can't escape the most, maybe. Is this the worst thing he's ever done? A hundred percent it's the 100%. worst thing he's ever done. Gotta be. Where was that young dumb high school kid? Where was that energy for <laughs> yeah. this movie? Huh? <laughs> it didn't feel like he had energy. None, it really dude. Like he was no like way. singing and like looking to the side and making sure it's like, oh yeah, I guess they're gonna go. Well, ahead that's yeah, we play. Uh-huh. Oh, I guess they like it. One. You know, and he's just yeah. We could also Bad. let's let's actually. I'll tell you what. Let's spend a little bit of time talking about uh, too literal. Just the the wee sports of it all, huh? Oh, the like. Man. Say Why? A, a massage? Yeah. Yeah. They're like, hey, nobody's watching. I can give him a massage. <laughs> and <laughs> Kevin Klein. Stop. You're so dis- seductive. Stop, Carter. Carter. Give it. Nobody's watching. Give a massage. Nobody's around. You probably a massage. <laughs> um, it's just like, oh, yeah. Like that thing is just like. Yeah, this I is. I don't know, man. This is. This movie's revved up. Whoa! Yeah, for real. Yeah. Super Wii Sportsian. Very Wii Sportsian. Well, we we had to we had to the cameraman. They were like, "Hey, editing. We got to move this up. They yeah. can't see what's going on down here. I know y'all. Are, I know y'all got your clothes on. Yeah, you can but, see a you can yeah. see a Wii mote. Bad news bears. You can see a Wii mote if you pan down too far. Do see some butts, yeah, probably. Do see two butts. You do see oh, two yeah. butts in this movie. There are some. Butts. It's so edgy. I was thinking. That's why Doge doesn't like it. Movie. His I hate butts. I'm <laughs> There's a butt in your movie. I'm, I'm always hate it. I'm always speaking of butts. I'm always looking at the butt shit. I meant to say like put butt into budget, but then <laughs> it just <laughs> so I think I might leave it. <laughs> I'm actually budget. I'm actually never checking that, but I love that you're interested. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Um I this cost ninety million. Part of the reason why it lost money was it was so expensive. <laughs> Emperor's New Groove, which came out the same year, cost one hundred million. 
Yeah. Um, money goes a lot further for animated movies these days because the Super Mario Brothers movie cost $100 million to make. As much as Emperor's New Groove and just 10 mil more than The Road to El Dorado. That's crazy. What? I think something that drove the budget up on this was the copious amount of CG. The decision to make all of the gold computer generated is completely baffling. The compu- Did you not like that about Aladdin? Uh, no. <laughs> I didn't. Aladdin, it, I think I it remember that. blended better into the movie than this does. This is super, yeah. super jarring. There was jarring. a lot of it in Aladdin. I had forgotten how much that was a part of. We saw that in Anastasia too. That, yeah. like, that, that was a thing. Like we're just kind of the slow introduction of 3D animation. It just People wasn't just composited like- as well here. Uh, the full CG whirlpool, Chibolba, which frustrates me a little bit because the city of gold was called Chibola. So what we called it Chibolba because Sabolba was a pod racer in episode Star Wars Episode One that came out the same year. So I guess we love adding that B in that last syllable. I don't know why that was full CG. There's so much of it that like, I think they clearly thought this would be a huge hit. And so they spent freely oh, yeah. and did not make it back. Man, Schrodinger's whirlpool a little bit, huh? A little bit. Thought that was going to come back with a little more importance instead of just no, pushing did. the guy nope. in. No, it it that's what shot Zekel Khan out out of the city. No, I understand that. I'm just saying. I thought maybe it would be more of a, a looming pipe. threat. Yeah, I thought it would be more of like yeah. a looming threat than just like. No, it's the back it door. Exists. It's a one way back door out of El Dorado. Yeah. Well, I guess it's time to rate this movie. We're going to do that using the scientific cinema scale, which is perfect and as follows. The best thing we could ever say about a movie is own it. Don't lend it. Buy Buy that that poster. poster. The next best thing we could ever say is buy it. That's weird. I got thrown off of my rhythm there. Did you Very strange for me. After that is rent it. It's followed by stream it. And then forget it. Last, but certainly least, the worst thing we could ever say about a movie. God hath forsaken us. On the trail we blaze. Does you want to go ahead? (laughs) Sure, because I I need to give you guys time to respond. I think in a movie that does not perhaps as freely trade in the white savior exoticism that this movie seems happy to participate in, I think if that stuff was removed, this would still be like a very low stream or potentially a forget it. But once you add that extra secret yucky ingredient for me, this becomes a God hath forsaken us. This is like, I'll never watch this again. I was extremely bored by this. It's a 90 minute movie and it felt like it was about four hours long. I'm out. I'm out on the road to El Dorado. No investing here. I buy the poster. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I stream it. And I think what's so funny is I rented Anastasia. So that tells me, and I did not like the leads in Anastasia, but I liked the leads here. And it's a lower grade for me. So that tells me I think overall music p- plays a far larger <clears throat> role and villain plays a big role for me. So yeah, this is a stream. Yeah. I'm I'm streaming this as well. I voted for this to be in. I hadn't watched this since probably high school or maybe even middle school, but hey. I voted for this to be in. I'm streaming this movie. I think that I think that there is a gracious viewing of this movie that is able to say it's the late 90s early 2000s and it wasn't made with any malice. I genuinely sure. believe I don't it was think it was either. With no malice. That being said, it was made with plenty of ignorance. And um, that is unfortunate and yes, absolutely taints it. I do still think it's kind of funny. And um, if you're able to, if you're able to separate final product from, or if you're able to mix in intent with final product and acknowledge that this was not made with hate in the hearts of DreamWorks no, in any really way, shape, or form, was. then I think you can watch this movie as a stupid ninety-minute, like B movie animated movie that is full of swashbuckling and honestly starts with some real Princess Bride energy and then just sort of devolves from there. Um, it, it's fun. I will certainly end up watching this again by accident at some point when I'm sick with a fever and Oops. don't want to watch something important. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a stream for me. This, this, this is the weakest of our four, I think, by far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've all gone. 
and here we are. We've all rated, and I think that's what's important. Look, the the road to El Dorado is a silly fun time with some nostalgia built in for me. But yeah, no, it is is a a wee bit troubling watching it with 2023 eyes and understanding a little more about the impact that uh, specifically white colonialism had on everybody. The planet? The whole entire planet? On everybody. Yeah, it's got a different flavor going down now as an adult. Um, but Miguel and Tulio still great, and uh, uh, both, 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 both's good is one of my most used gifs of all time. So I do really love that. Next week we're going to be watching the simply unproblematic, thank goodness, Iron Giant, and I'm very, very excited for that. So see, it's unproblematic now, but give us 15 years when advanced generative AI is a thing. And they're not going to like this one. Well, here's a fun fact yeah, for you. I'll be happy about that. The Iron Giant is actually a movie written about gun control. It's a metaphor for gun control. So, I did know that. Look at that. I did know that. So tune in next week as we talk about the Iron Giant. Going to be just I'm just going to be a blubbery crying mess the entire time. It's going to be amazing. I can't this. wait. Uh, so yeah, make sure you join us as we do that, and uh, ju- please jump into Discord. I I think that. One of the funnest things about our podcast is, and I'm 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 guilty plenty of times of lurking in my own Discord more than anything else. I read every post always. I just frequently forget to uh, chime in because I love so much reading what you guys have to say about things. It's one of my favorite things. Unless and, unless you're complaining about cartoon characters not advancing in a bracket. No, chop it up. Say whatever you want to say about Listen, it. Listen, ba- microphones ba- 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 aren't fine. expensive. It's free to put a podcast out on the Apple yeah. Podcast Store. Do your own. Mm, I feel so manipulative because I'm like, show. it doesn't It doesn't bother me when they get mad at y'all. It's like, I realize <laughs> I put myself in situations all the time to where I'm never making the decisions. Yes, of course. That is... <laughs> That is that is your brand, <laughs> sir. That is your brand. You're the one who's like... Who's like, mm, controversial, interesting. Mm. Sure hope nobody says anything about it. Mm. Just drop y'all to I think it. I think you have to choose. <laughs> well, maybe next year it'll just be my bracket. I live for the tears of people that I care about. And of the kingdom. Dang. And of the kingdom. Soon. Amen. Full brother. circle. Amen. Full circle. I did it. So make sure you uh, jump on into Discord. We, we want you there. We love you. I love you. He does. He wow. means it. To end today's episode, I'd like for each of us to say our love you so names much. Love you and so much. what fictional city we'd like to see a movie about. And you can't say it, Liz. <laughs> uh, you know what? Let me back up. Let's not say fictional city. Let's say that's a little too narrow. Let's say fictional location or real location with fictional mythology. How about that? Because, and, and I'm only saying that it's self-serving here, because my name is Jordan Wonders. For two chunks and hunk, my name is Jordan Wonders. And what I'd like to see is, show me show me what's, what's the deal with Stonehenge. I want to see a movie about the creation, the erection of Stonehenge. Give like me that. give me, uh, give me a whole society putting up uh, weird rectangle-shaped blocks on top of each other. Tell me why. Are they portals? They're portals. I know they're portals. Gotta be. I'm Doge. I would love to see a movie about a journey to discover Relich, the nameless city of the lost old ones. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, like a Lovecraft kind of thing. Yeah, that's obviously be great. the coolest It'll thing. It'd be great. I've never even heard of that. You can't. It, once you hear it, you go mad. You can't hear of it. Oh. I'm not mad. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm Carter. And take me to Easter Island. Take me to Easter Island, I worship like a dog. <laughs> the trail we blaze. The Easter, it's take me to Easter Island is the lead track for like in the 2000s, if they made a movie about that, but it's Jimmy Buffett. Yeah. And he's, the, he would definitely <laughs> do that. Take me to Easter Island. Does, does Jimmy Buffett play a big giant singing Easter Island head in the movie? Yeah. Ooh. Cool. We've seen the Eastern Island. Eastern? I meant Eastern Island, not Easter. I don't know what y'all were thinking of. <laughs> oh, interesting. The Eastern Island, known as Rhode Island. I want to know all about it. <laughs> it's not real. How did it get here? How did it How stop being an island? How Where's did they the become part of a continent? Yeah, why do they say island when it's not? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>